So I, I would I would like to to compare that problem to the problem of finding distance between skew lines. So uh, for the distance between skew lines, we know how to find it. What we do basically is we associate one variable with parameter of one line, another variable as a parameter on the other line, and then we let those parameters run arbitrarily and minimize certain function of t and s. That was the idea algebraically. Now, what if I want to find the shortest distance, not between the line and the line, but between a part of this line and a part of that line? Is that a reasonable question? I have a straight line segment here in 3 space, a straight line segment there in 3 space, and I want to find the shortest distance between those two. So how would that question change the algebraic setup? Well, the setup is that the condition being here on the segment provides restriction on t. t is allowed to take values only within this interval, which is kind of analog of calculus 1 obstruction. Right? So now Instead of looking at the function on the whole plane st, now you're looking at the coordinate plane st because st are variables. Instead of looking at the whole plane, you say, well, t is limited by a couple of values. t can only change between those. And also s is limited, so there are a couple of values there for s. Now, what does it mean for the function s? What are going to be the points on the domain that are allowed? Well, being, well, t being between these two means all the points in this strip are allowed. Right? And s being between these two means all the points between these two lines in the domain R allowed. And that means that only points inside this rectangle are allowed. It is only when one point is here and the other is there simultaneously. So that means for the function f, we have to limit f To that rectangle D. And the real question is, well, find minimum on that D. And the procedure is as I described. So you find the critical points inside, minimize on the boundary, and that minimization of the boundary is the whole process. But what can you do? So for the minimization on the boundary, this setup is a little different from what we had before. Because in the previous setup, the curve was given. So do you remember how the curve was given for that problem? When you had to find the value uh, minimum of function on the curve. The curve was given like an ellipse, for example, parametrically. Or as a curve satisfying an equation. Now, can you think of an equation for the rectangle? Do you know the, an equation on S and T, so called G? G of ST, so that G of ST equals zero describes exactly the 
perimeter of that rectangle. Well, that would be hard to think about. And that curve, the problem about that curve is that that curve will not be linearizable at the corners. Even if you figure out the equation, you will not be able to follow the calculus procedure because of those exceptional corners. So that is impossible. So you have to parameterize. Can you parameterize? Well, can you think of the boundary of D represented parametrically as uh, now you have S and T in terms of some parameter, I don't know, lambda. Uh, can you think of one nice parameterization of the rectangle? Well, again, there is no nice, one nice parameterization, because whatever it is, it should make this corner, and making the corner makes it non-differentiable. And again, the procedure will fail from calculus point of view. So what you can only do is you can parameterize a part of the boundary, one side. And then you can parameterize the other side, and the other side, and the other side. And once you parameterize one side, you can find minimum of a function on that side. And then you parameterize the second, find minimum, the third, find minimum, the fourth, find minimum, then compute the values of f on the critical points inside. So you have minimum of those critical values and minimum here, minimum there, minimum there, minimum there. And just five numbers to compare. You can do that. 